car audio, etc. is proudly supported by Auto Sound and Security. James here from Carrier etc. Welcome back to day two of trying to get this parking aid system installed in my legacy. Um, if you watched yesterday's video, you guys know where I'm at. I got all the sensors pretty much installed and wires ran and everything like that. Today I need to get the module wired up and connected to the stereo. And the only other thing I really have to install is this little infrared uh, receiver. If you didn't see yesterday's video, click on the card up in the corner and go and watch that first because that kind of explains it all. And if you have literally no idea what I'm talking about, um, go about two or three videos back. I did a video called, Unbo uh, called Judy's Christmas Present. That's explaining what this whole sort of kit is. So if you're not familiar, watch those first and then come back and see me. But for those of you who are up to date with everything that's going on, yeah, that's all I have to do today. Install the module, get it wired to the head unit and the little LED infrared receiver thing and it should be all up and running and ready to go. So that's what I'm gonna try and get done today. It won't take me too long. And um, yeah, I'm gonna start trying to take this sort of area below the glove box down a wee bit. If you guys remember from yesterday, I want to try and mount the module just to the left of that big silver box there. The wires are all in the way at the moment, but there is a big gap up in there and I'm hoping to get it up in there. I'm gonna like double-sided uh, stick it to the side of that module there. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna undo that nut down there and the nut up. Right, I will find you nut, the nut up there, that nut. I need to get those out and then I'm hoping this whole sort of assembly is gonna just sort of rock down and it'll make it easier for me to wire it all up there rather than trying to do it up in that position. And I need to get the uh, trim off the stereo, possibly get the stereo out and get some wires run to that. All I need to do with the stereo is get an RCA lead going from the stereo's camera input down to this location. The reverse trigger input needs to come down to this location and I need to get the original reverse trigger from the tail light down to here as well. So basically this unit is kind of going to interrupt my, uh, my reverse camera's feed and trigger and do it all through that. And that's all I really have to do. I have to get power to it. Yeah, put power on that camera. Should be all right. All right, so this shouldn't take me too long. Time lapse. Okay guys, uh, quite some time later I've been doing various jobs here and there but mostly um, I got a bit carried away with uh, tidying up this wiring situation behind my head unit. It's something I've been wanting to do for a while because um, I've had the stereo in and out so many times and added so many things in over the last year or two and it's just been getting messier and messier with my wiring. So I've pretty much redone all of it and I don't think there's anything much more I'm going to have to add to this in the future. So like, I redid the big mess that was in here and now everything is nice and test the tape. It still looks like an absolute, you know, bundle, but it looks way better than it, better than it did. Got the harness here. Um, this loop and these wires here, they are something that are going to connect onto one of those voltage regulators that we have in order to regulate voltage for the LEDs in the doors, because the door LEDs are these wires here, which are actually the factory speaker wires. But don't worry about that. So that's for another time. I've like got that pre-wired for another time. All the wires now are heat shrunk as opposed to electrical tape because I want to last a while. I've got my steering wheel control, that's how it was already. And then over here, I've got a bunch of crimps. That blue one there on the outside is the remote for the amp, obviously. And then in here, we've got like a purple slash gray going to another purple and another purple. And basically what that is, is um, this one here that coming down the outside is the reverse signal coming from the reverse light. That comes up, does a U-turn and goes back to one of these crimps. 
which goes off to the reverse trigger light for our module, you know. And then the reverse output, oops, the reverse output of that module comes back up and is the purple one which then connects into the reverse trigger for the stereo. So it's a couple of <laughs> U-turns here and there, but the idea of the crimps is it's good because I can actually just unplug those two and then plug the reverse light straight into the stereo if I ever need to, say the module dies or something like that. And then we've also got our cameras here. The white one is my side mirror, my left side mirror um, RCA. The yellow one here is also coming from that module. That's the video output of it. And then we've also got our microphone loomed in with it. All the wiring at the back has been loomed up nice and tidily. I redid everything that needed power. There was a bunch of stuff that was getting accessory and permanent power, like um, these wires here, which were for that voltmeter in the glove box. Um, there's some wiring here because I put a second uh, cigarette lighter in the center console here which gets permanent power and that had to be redone. The module needed accessory power, this needed accessory power as well as permanent. What else? I'm sure this, oh, the left, w the wing mirror camera needed accessory power and earth. Bunch of stuff that needed basically doing. And I've also got this relay in here and uh, this relay might be a flop idea but I thought it might be worth having a go at it. So um just got three wires going onto it it's got a negative it's got a reverse trigger which is the purple wire that gray wire there is soldered onto two of the posts so that's the ground for the relay and the uh, input for what I want it to come out and the yellow wire there is the output and that goes to the mute wire of the stereo so the idea is that when I go into reverse it sends a ground signal to the mute wire on the stereo and this might be a bad idea but basically because my stereo has a nice setting you can turn on where if it receives the mute signal it just attenuates it as opposed to fully muting it. I thought it might be nice to, you know, when I'm in reverse or something like that just have the music attenuate. So I might end up taking that all out but I just thought I'd give it a go. So yeah, that's from at with that and then we've got the USBs and auxiliary over here oh, and the RCAs are bundled. Actually I need to bundle those up a bit better because that's there's a lot there. I fixed up the cigarette lighter thing for so this dash cam here just came with a big long cigarette lighter which I have had hardwired in here for some time but um I just used a female cigarette socket so what I've done now I'm not sure if you can see down there that's it there but now there's just wires coming straight out of the front of the cigarette socket focus so now there's just wires coming straight out of the front of the cigarette socket as opposed to having a plug and then basically it just goes it, it interrupts the uh, cigarette lighter these are the cigarette lighter wires boom Boom. So it runs off the signal lighter. So yeah, I've been doing a lot of wire tidying. But what I'm at now is the stage where I think I could put the head unit back in. As I say, I just need to loom up those RCAs a bit better. And I could put the head unit back in and then start testing this module before I get it all mounted up there. I need to put power on both the camera wires because here is my rear view camera. No, not that. This is my rear view camera wire. That's going to need power on it. That's the front camera. That's going to need power on it. And then, then yeah, just getting it mounted up. Okay, let's uh, the stereo back in. Okay, right, so, now this needs to be above ground, i.e. it needs to be coming through up here. There we go. Those things need to go up there as well. So even with all this work that I've put into tidying it up, it's still a mess because there's just so many freaking wires. So many. Okay, okay. Okay. Plug in the main harness, wired remote, yellow is rev cam, which is that one there, white goes to video input, which is that one there, microphone over here, aerial plugs in over there, and then auxiliary plugs in over there, and then the two USBs, which are harder to get. Now USB 1 is the other one there. Flip that up that way. There we go. I think that's everything plugged in. Now I've got to get it all back down into this hole. Oh, the RCAs. Right, I just need to plug in the subwoofer ones. There. Okay, cool. Everything needs to come back through here. Okay. No, it's not. There we go. Just get a screw in holding that up. One. Two. Okay, cool. Now, let's just plug these sensors in. and see if we get anything out. So that one is the rear. And I'm going to have to be playing around, switching these around until I get them the right way, since they're not labelled. Rear and front. 
from there. Okay, cool. All the sensors are plugged in. Main harness is plugged in. Only things that aren't plugged in are the cameras, but they haven't got power anyway, so let's turn it on. Oh yeah, well the sensors are working. I need to move that thing out of the way. Okay. English, iPod, USB 1, CarPlay on. Okay. Now, what happens when I go in reverse? I'm going to have to change around my lines now, because it's going to show up like that. But it does look like the image is coming through, so that's good. Get our front cam our rear camera, which goes into this one here. Hook up our rear camera image. There's our rear camera image. Oh, I see. It crops the image as opposed to um, squeezing it. Right. And then if we went out of it, the front camera would be this one here. Seems like everything is working so far. The only thing I need to do is get all the uh, sensors plugged into the right holes. The hard part. We're going to need a friend. So if I go walk in front of the car, it should set off the image. Oh, let's uh, see if that mute thing was working or not. Okay, so we need to go radio. Radio. No sound for some reason. Why is there no sound? Oh, right, we haven't got our um, front and rear RCAs plugged in yet. Have I got the fader on the right way? So now if I wanted to reverse... Oh yeah, it's working. It just attenuates it. But it is still there. Cool. Okay, so it seems like everything is working up that end, so I can put this trim back on. Oh wait, there are two more screws to go in. Let's do that. I'll oh, call cool, that's all working. Sweet. Okay. All good up there. Now I need to focus on the down here part of it. Okay guys, finished, locked up, ready to go home, but first I need to give you guys the demo of how it works. Um, sorry about the filming today, it's just been kind of on and off, I've been trans going between this car and other cars that I've had to do jobs on, and also this job ended up taking me a lot longer than what I thought it would today, only because like I came in today intending on just mounting that unit up there and getting it going, but I actually spent a lot more time cleaning up the wiring behind the head unit. But anyway, um, yeah, today was basically just about getting it mounted up somewhere and going and I, you guys knew where I was going to put it. So now I'm just going to give you the demo on how everything works and um, before I forget, yes I will put a link for this product in the description. I found it on AliExpress, I'll put the link down there. So everything's back together, head unit start back in and I've got this little remote which uh, controls, goes to a little infrared receiver which is, I didn't have time to mount it anywhere so I just left it hanging down there if you can see that's just it there so it's just sort of sticking out of the carpet there maybe if I had a bit more time I might have put it in the back of here somewhere I'm not sure but um down there is fine for now actually what would be cool would be to mount it behind some of the black plastic up in there but maybe that's another project for another day but anyway uh, so first things first if I go into reverse what you get is a whole bunch of beeping going on because this car has its own chime, this ding, ding. I wish I could turn that off, but you can't. And then there's beeping coming from over at the glove box, letting me know that there's something, you know, quite close to the back of my car. And so you can see it's uh, picking up the fence there. If I go forward a wee bit, to handbrake off. I just go forward, there we go, now I go into reverse. What you'll notice as I get closer to the fence, See, it's starting to pick it up. So that 
says it's 0.3 meters away, it reckons. That's the uh, sensors though, not the tow ball, but let's see if I can get a wee bit closer. Oh, stop, there we go, it's saying stop now. Let's see how, far, how close we are to the fence. Okay, yeah, I mean, I suppose that there is probably around about 25 centimeters, just off a foot, so it's pretty accurate, it's just the tow bar sticks out a wee bit. So that's how the rear sensors are working, and um, yes, they are working independently, and I've got them in the right order. And with the front ones, they're just automatic, so if you just walk around in front of the car, they'll start going off and it will display on here. Something else you'll notice that was working is um, that relay I put in to tell the stereo to mute when it receives the mute trigger. That attenuation is working, so that's good, I'm happy with that. I think I might in the future though change that over, because I have that trigger wire set to the same as um, what the module puts out, so it happens even when you're in front camera mode. I think I might switch it over to the actual reverse trigger where it only mutes it if you're in actual reverse. Um, so what this remote does is at any time, if I just push this uh, V1, V2 button down here, like sort of point it down that area, see how it muted the music. So that first thing it does is it puts on the front camera, and then you push it again and it goes to the rear camera, and you can see it's, it's not chiming because it hasn't been turned on automatically, it's been turned on manually, but it's got like all the lights up there, push it again, beeps once and goes back to there. Um, with this remote I can also mute the beeping if it's annoying me, so if it's happening I can just push this button here to mute it, and I can turn the whole system off as well, so if I push that, like it, none of the sensors will go. And as far as these buttons, they don't really do anything, you only really use these three. But I'll show you the front ones now, so I'll set the camera up and I'll go walk in front of the car, and you guys will see. Okay, I'm going to go walk in front of the car. So when the sensors pick up something in front of the car, first it starts, it doesn't, it waits until you're quite close to something, like about half a meter or less than a meter, and then it starts doing the slow chime, and uh, it will only give you the slow chime but no image until you get closer to something where it gives you the solid chime and then it starts displaying the image. And then if you go further out of range there, the image will stay on. Also it's worth noting that even when in reverse, the uh, front sensors work. So I'll show you here, if I put the car into reverse, you can see it's going to show up the rear camera image and the rear sensors, but if I now walk in front of the car, you can see that it lights up the front sensor marks as well. Come out of reverse. So let's uh, turn the car around and see what it looks like when you drive up close to something. Start the car up. So I'm just going to start driving up to this uh, wall here. And uh, just to prove that the muting does work as well, let's put the music up a wee bit. Now if I start driving up to something. So there's the beeping has started there. Don't know if you can hear it over the music, but the beeping has started. Now if I get closer, there comes the, uh, there you go, mute the music and the solid chime comes on and it shows that we're quite close. But now if I back off, go into reverse, it changes to the rear camera. Let's do like a three point turn here. There we go, it's starting to pick up something in both ends. Switch to the front. Going to reverse.
one thing I one thing I think I am going to do is uh, take off these parking lines that the stereo puts on. I adjusted them to see if I can make them look a bit better, but I actually don't think I like it as much because when I'm in the front camera mode, they still show up. So that's the rear camera. You can see these lines here that I'm talking about, the yellow ones. But if I uh, if I show you the front camera, you'll see what I mean. So there's the front camera, and I like the lines that are built into the camera, they line up quite nicely, but then there's these lines here which are put on by the stereo. So I'm thinking in the settings, I might actually turn those off. Settings, camera settings, parking guide assist, parking assist guide off. There we go. And the other thing this stereo can do is if I just go home, I need to rearrange this a wee bit because I lost power because I unplugged the stereo, but if I click camera view, so I've still got the use of my, oh, we're on the wrong one I think, if I click that. Yeah, I've still got the use of my, uh, that's my front uh, front left wing mirror camera, showing me the front left wheel so I know whereabouts the curb is. The only thing I don't like about this system, and I said it before when I did the unboxing, is that there is no video pass through. So if you're not in reverse or the front sensors aren't picking up anything, if, you're just, if you just view the video output of it, there's nothing there. It's just blank. That's the one thing I don't like about it. See, like if I go video, so it's not until you either use the remote to turn it on, like that, where it displays it, or if you actually go into reverse, it will display it, or if the front sensors pick something up, it will display it, but it won't just, you know, do it straight through the normal way. Camera view. See, there's nothing there. So I'll just use that uh, camera view function to see my front left wheel. And then if I ever want to be seeing what's behind the car or in front of the car while I'm driving along, I'll have to use this remote and push and point it down there and uh, turn it on that way. As I'd, I'd say would be my one pet peeve with this whole system is that you have to use a remote to display the image at any time. I think that's about everything I can show you guys. Um, it's worth me noting with this kit. So at first I thought what it did was it, um, I thought it actually squished the image up. Oh wait, does it? Because that's all entirely there. Does it squish? I think it does, yeah, it squishes the whole image up as opposed to going over top of it. Yeah, sorry, the reason the tow ball is just off a wee bit is because my camera is off centre. But that looks pretty good like that, it makes it look like this is laid over top of it. So overall, I'm really happy with this kit. Um, I didn't pay much for it at all, which is the whole reason I went for it, as opposed to using a kit from one of the ones that we sell here at Autosound. None of the ones we do here have that video interface, which is what something I really wanted. I think I paid about 156 New Zealand dollars, including shipping, for this kit from AliExpress, wherever that came from. I think it might have come from China or US. I honestly don't, I don't even know where I got it from now. But I will put the link for it in the description so you guys can find it if you want to. And just also have a look around because uh, what I found when I was looking for this thing, um, I could only find this kit with this sort of image on AliExpress, but there were a bunch of different ones for different prices for the same product so it's worth having a look around that website for the best price uh yeah i think that's everything review i'm very happy with it i think the sensors i mean they're made in china they could be a bit more sensitive it's not definitely not as good a quality as like a factory european style one but um i think it will do the trick what's this going past it's like a super or something not hugely common yeah sorry guys i'm just a bit tired it's been a long day um yeah, no, I'm happy with how they turned out visually. The color match looks good on my car. I'm happy with the resolution of the image on the stereo. That's the main thing that I think I was actually concerned with was that it would come out all pixelated or something like that. Um, yeah, I think it's going to be good. Can't wait to see what Jess thinks. Oh, but anyway, I'm tired. Thanks for watching, guys. Um, remember to like my Facebook page, subscribe to this channel, hit the notification bell, support me on Patreon, choose to be happy, and I will catch you next time. Kakatano.